Teddy says this, hey Zach, this isn't really a question, but I kind of want to write in to tell you why I enjoy your show as much as I do. With sports content, I tend to find that stuff that makes its way onto, quote, mainstream sports networks, i.e. ESPN and Fox Sports, tends to be the most radical or extreme takes. The amount of reactionary and catastrophic, you know, catastrophist, I don't know if that's a word, content that comes out of these networks is astonishing to me. The best part about your show isn't that you're entirely immune to reactionary takes. No one truly can be. But... When you fall into that trap, you circle back around and admit when you were wrong. That's a refreshing habit for me, especially because I'm studying political science and nobody ever admits when they were wrong in that context. I figured that this is a perfect time to write in about this because when Joe Shiesty beats the Rams despite getting sacked 27 times, you might have to admit you were wrong again. Um, Teddy, that's a long write in. Thank you so much. That's amazing. I, I want to talk about this because I think I have become well known as the guy who makes content about when I'm wrong, which is kind of weird. Like, people are like, oh, he's wrong all the time. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm right about a ton of stuff. I, I nail predictions all the time. I just try not to glow about it. Like, the only time I can remember really gloating about a prediction was when I predicted the Seattle Seahawks have a bad year this year. And I was like, yeah, I planted my flag and said, I am so annoyed by all the hate I got. But for the most part, I try to be classy and... That was definitely not one of my most classy moments, was gloating about that. But I try not to be that guy, right? Um, and, and more important to me than bragging about the times I get a prediction right is going back and talking about the stuff I get wrong. And it's, it's not that I'm wrong about all kinds of stuff. It's that I actually talk about, talk about it when I'm wrong. Most people in the sports world, when they have an old take that doesn't age very well, they just kind of sweep it under the rug, pretend it never ex- happened or never existed, and, you know, you occasionally see a lot of sports broadcasters, someone, somebody will cut together a YouTube compilation of them being wrong. And I'm trying to think of, I don't like dropping names, but, you know, Skip Bayless, Colin Cowherd, anybody in the, you know, Jim Rome, whoever, right? There are videos out there, compilations of times they were wrong. And I've always, as a fan of sports radio, I grew up loving, loving loving sports radio as a kid. I'm heavily inspired by one in particular. I'm sure you can figure out who that is. Um, he copied my beard, by the way. That frustrated me. Um, <laughs> um, and I've always thought, like, how cool would it be if a guy like Colin Cowherd, who I loved as a child, would, like, react to all the compilations of them on YouTube? And so I try to, instead of having other people edit it for me and go find it, I'll just make it myself. I'll cut together the clips of me saying wrong stuff and I try to own all the things I get wrong and revisit it and have a lot of fun with it and not take myself too seriously so um Teddy thank you it's funny when I started strong opinion sports I I was copying people like Colin Cowherd and Stephen A. Smith and I felt like I had to pick a side on every topic and what's weird about this show is it's called strong opinion sports but really as time has gone on it's really become more of moderate opinion sports. I actually sit on the fence all the time. And I'm like, look, it could go this way. It could go that way. I try to present both sides of every argument and be very rational and well thought out, which isn't necessarily reflective of the name. And I've had to kind of start saying that sometimes the strongest thing you can say is that there isn't a right answer and both sides have to be considered. And, you know, that sometimes, again, sometimes just saying what you believe is the strongest thing you can possibly say, and even if it's not picking a side. So, um, Teddy, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for writing in. That's some of my, my approach behind the scenes and kind of the origins of the show, where it came from, some of my thought process. And uh, I don't know. I, I really try to be very, very fair and objective. I do not have a favorite team. I openly have favorite players. I love Joe Burrow. I love Tom Brady for years. Uh, but I... Look, I, I, for example, um, I would consider myself, I don't, I, I'm, I'm pretty close with the guy, the quarterback at Pittsburgh, Keaton Slovis, and the day will come where Keaton has a bad game, and I'm going to have to say, look, Keaton missed that read and that read, that was bad. Like, I'm going to have to criticize a guy I'm friends with. That's part of the job. I, and I have no doubt in my mind that I can be honest about that kind of stuff. And if people that I'm friends with end friendships with me because I'm honest, 
that's their deal, not mine. But my job is to be honest first. I'm never going to trash Keaton Slovis. I love the guy. But to be clear, like, I talk to a lot of quarterbacks behind the scenes, and they either don't follow me on Instagram or don't want me to talk about our relationship. Keaton's been on the show very open. Like, I don't I don't think we have a relationship where if I ever was critical, I'm, I'm sure, in fact, in fact, if I ever was like, hey, Keaton had two really bad interceptions that are terrible, Keaton would probably agree with me and go, yep, got to play better in here in this moment and that moment. So um, I just want people to know I always try to be as objective as I can within reason. Like, I have an opinion. I will tell you my opinion, but I try to be very fair. And uh, I'm not a homer in any stretch of the imagination. I don't hate anybody. I don't hate any team. Um, and so that's some of the stuff behind the scenes behind my approach to the show.